It's a drag race for the Coromandel. Took a little bit of getting used to driving a car that was purple. National Party frontrunner Sandra Gowdy wants to be world famous in this electorate. So it's pedal to the metal in her V8 Falcon. Well, what's it feel like with eight cylinders throbbing under the hood? <laughs> really good. You may be Pace is a bit more sedate for the incumbent, Green co-leader Jeanette Fitzsimons. I have a small car because it uses less fuel and it's less polluting. I run it on CNG because that's less polluting still. Um, and the way we use cars is actually one of the most environmentally damaging things that we do in our society. Conventional wisdom has it that National handed Coromandel to Jeanette Fitzsimons last election by attacking her with a postcard campaign over marijuana reform. Nationals desperate for the country's only green electorate to be true blue again. What's the pressure from the National Party for you to win back this seat? Um, well, they certainly like it to happen. Oh, it's very important. This is a seat that used to be ours. It's allowed the Greens to get a foothold in Parliament and we're going to win it back. Did you blow it last time? No, I don't think we did. I think we got a lot closer uh, on election day than we thought we might two weeks out. Although there were still a few teething problems over protocol with Sandra Gowdy, a local councillor and farmer. Now what we'll do is I'll get the chairman to uh, get you to say a few words first. What am I going to say? to say, uh, pleased to have the leader here, this is a really important seat, that's why he's come here, why he's on this uh, trip. Ladies and gentlemen, it's wonderful to see you here today. And uh, as you can see, I don't tend to go anywhere without my gumboots. <laughs> One of the reasons I'm very, so proud of our candidate here, Sandra Gowdy, is because the other great strength of our party in the past has been our close connection to the community. Bill English's speech is notable for the fact that he didn't mention Jeanette Fitzsimons once. Instead, he hammered law and order and Treaty of Waitangi claims. If we can get the treaty claims settled, I think a lot of those things will go away. So close the book after 12 months and then settle the claims by the end of 2008. It's the issue Sandra Gowdy is keen to make her own at meetings all over this electorate. This leads me into the National Party policy, which I have a great deal of interest in, and that's fair, full and final settlement of treaty claims by the year 2008. This is supported by the guiding principle of one citizenship for all New Zealanders, and I believe we have to act now to ensure we have a future for our children and our grandchildren, and I'm committed to making that happen. Playing into Sandra Gowdy's hands is what she sees as a modern-day turf war between two Māori tribes that harks back to the first canoes. It's hopeless. We're in a hopeless situation and nobody will deal with it. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Then what can we do? Sit down and cry. <laughs> How do you hold an iwi authority to account? There's, there's nothing... There's nothing to stop them from doing this other than, other than the requirement to act in good faith. The cause of the agro, a new wastewater plant for the seaside resorts of Tairua and Pawanui, is stalled because it can't get consent from one of the local iwi. The old plant is too small. Sewerage overflowed into the harbour over Christmas. The Thames Coromandel District Council has spent more than one and a half million dollars in ten years working on a solution. The site it decided on was next to an old PAR site on land held by the Crown Forestry Rental Trust. Ngāti Maru have a claim in with the Waitangi Tribunal over the land, while the smaller Ngāti Hay says it's definitely theirs. Ngāti Hay have given their consent, but Ngāti Maru hasn't. When you endeavour to act in good faith with Ngāti Maru Iwi Authority, the 
it, it doesn't actually guarantee that it will prevent any objections to any activities you may have further down the track. Ngāti Maru are claiming that one of their distant relations from another hapu had a connection with that site. So they are claiming that they have tangata whenua status on that equal to that of Ngāti Hay. But it's very, very difficult because, I mean, you can imagine, you can, I mean, I'm sure we could all be traced back to, to the monkeys, but <laughs> how far do you go? Who runs this country? <laughs> if, if the Crown... District Council, all these other statutory bodies and processes are worth nothing at the end of the day. Nati Maru or some Niki authority pulls the strings. What's the point? We don't have a country. This is not our country, is it? These are the hoppers, developers and one of New Zealand's richest families. They're present at this hastily organised meeting because they have a strong interest in this wastewater plant going ahead. We've just been used. There's a moratorium on all new development in Tairua and Pawanui until a new plant is built. What has your elected representative been doing? This is the old PAR site. The bit of dirt the argument is all about. The locals who want the project to go ahead here see it as a battle of good Māori versus bad Māori. As far as Sandra Gowdy is concerned, Ngāti Maru are the villains of the piece. She says they're holding up development all over the peninsula and treaty claims are at the centre of all that. But Ngāti Maru says it's not as simple as that. They believe they're being used as a political football to ensure that National wins this electorate. I can surely tell you this one thing, that when the elections come and gone, the Ngāti Maru people will still bear the scars of the false accusations and allegations made against them in regards to this process. Assignment has seen a memorandum of understanding between Ngāti Maru and the Council. It clearly shows that the Council recognises Ngāti Maru as the kaitiaki or guardian of the area where the proposed water treatment plant was to go. There were also meant to be a series of meetings, but Ngāti Maru says only two took place. Then they got the hard word. We were given a phone call, asked to come down, and when we sat at the table, the project manager said to us, here's the map, here's the profile, here's the management plan that will mitigate your concerns. And we were just taken back. How did you react to that? Well, uh, we were just dumbfounded because two years ago, we had an agreement to work through six options. The end result of that two years later is, here's how it is. The Labour candidate, Max Purnell, is on Ngāti Maru's side. Look, Ngāti Maru iwi had to deal with, over the last 133 years, with a situation that was like none other. It was ten, where they went from a basically indigenous population to 10,000 people in three years when the gold hit here. Off the back of that, they have been, you could argue, the perfect hosts. They gave the land for the hospitals, they gave the land for the schools. They've been very good to live with. I grew up with the Ngāti Maru uh, people and they're my friends. Uh, yeah, I can't say uh, any, I can, can not see any reason why they deserve to be attacked in the way they are. I think there's been some poor process as well as some intransigence both ways. It's very easy to rack up feeling against a particular section of the community but actually it doesn't help us solve the issue and the issue relates to uh, who are the real owners of that land. Are you worried that you might be accused of, of Maori bashing by raising these sorts of issues? No, I, I'm not, because um, we clearly see the um, support that we are getting in partnership approaches with Ngāti Hay, and that's a real bonus for us, because it's such a, such a difficult field to work in. I mean, it's, it's really good for us to have that partnership relationship with Ngāti Hay, and um, it's unfortunate that we can't have the same sort of relationship with Ngāti Māori. Who's right or wrong in this matter may end up being determined by the courts. In the meantime, it looks like treaty issues could swing this older conservative electorate. Ooh. Bit of pruning there, John. Pawanui retiree John Curtis voted for Jeanette Fitzsimons at the last election after being a lifetime national voter. He won't do it this time. Well, one thing that concerns me about the treaty, it seems as though we're, we're going uh, headlong into separatism uh, as opposed to uh, one people, one nation.
concept that it used to be, and I would like to see us get back to one people, one nation, because the separatism is creating a lot of problems right throughout the country, and um, this business with our waste water uh, is in line with that sort of concept. I don't think that we should determine our stance on everything just on the basis of votes. We have a set of principles that we have put before the electorate. People know exactly what we stand for when they vote for us, and if they don't like them, then they won't vote for us. Next, the Green MP meets the developer. Great.